Hey guys, this is Trevor with Patrick Adair Supplies, and today we're going to be going through our August sub box, and we're going to be talking about the sunken treasure ring today. So let's look at the supplies. All right, so in this box we have our obsidian pigment, our swamp green pigment, our bright sapphire pigment, aqua glow powder, your tungsten ring blank, copper shavings, an empty vial, and then for freebies we have our cyan opal, our tray, and last but not least we have some gold leaf. Okay, so to start the ring off, I'm going to apply a thin layer of our thick CA around the base of the ring channel. After that is on there, I pour on our black aqua glow mixture and make sure that none of the metal of that ring channel is showing through the pigment. After that is set, I'm filling up the channel with our medium CA and then letting the excess drip off. After the excess medium CA is off, I am going to take our copper shavings and sprinkle them throughout the entire ring channel. When I get those covered, I like to take the back end of my tweezers and push those into the channel just to make sure that they are all really set in there with that medium CA. Then I'm going to take our blue aqua mixture and sprinkle that randomly throughout the ring. Followed up with our sunken mixture, sprinkled randomly throughout the ring as well. And to set everything in place, I'm taking our super thin CA and just doing some drops around the ring. Not enough to make it drip, but enough to saturate that pigment. And then I'm going to just take our accelerant and give it a quick spray to set everything in place. Next step, I'm going to set the RPM on the lathe to a slow speed and slowly build up the rest of that ring channel with our super thin CA. I like to do about five to six drops per curing cycle with a spritz of accelerant in between. And I'll keep going through with those five to six drops until that ring channel is completely full with our super thin. I like to try and take my time at this stage because if you add too much accelerant too fast, you can add 
bubbles into the super thin and get some undesirable finish on there. After the ring is fully cured, I'm going to take a Dremel and just sand everything flush, trying not to heat up the copper shavings too much. Um, if you do, they will get hot and melt that CA around it and fly out. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's super easy to fix. Uh, I just try to avoid it to make the finishing process a little bit easier. So after that is all ground down, I'm doing a quick 220 wet sand just to expose any impurities in the ring or any harsh Dremel lines. And then I'm going to take a razor and dig out those holes, cut out those harsh lines. And I'm gonna take whatever pigment you choose and just kind of fill in those holes a little bit and wet everything one more time with another layer of super thin. Again, with about five to six drops. After that final layer of super thin is cured, I'm going to take our 220 grit, 500 grit, 1000 grit, and wet sand all the way through until we get that nice flush finish on the ring. And to finish everything off, I'm going to take our polishing compound and give it a quick um, cycle with that just to really get a good shine on the ring. The polishing compound is not necessary if you don't have any. Um, you can always just go with higher grits of sandpaper until you get the finish you like. I just think the polishing compound is a little bit quicker, save you a couple steps of sanding. And after that polishing compound has been applied, I'm just going to clean it off. And we are left with our sunken artifact ring. All right, so this is our finished ring. It's one of my favorite rings. I think it's got a lot of good depth. Um, it really gives the feel of being in the depths of the ocean. Um, the copper shavings and the pigment really complement each other, and I think you guys should have a really fun time making this ring.